Hello everyone. Welcome to IITN Gate Classes. This is your eighth lecture on TOC. And in this lecture, we are going to start our 10th topic according to syllabus of your second chapter, that is finite automaton regular languages. And this 10th topic is closure properties of languages. If you have uh, not watched my second lecture on TOC, then please, my kind suggestion is watch that lecture. In that lecture, I have explain the sequence of topics which i'm going to cover in the second chapter itself okay so the syllabus of second chapter is discussed in the lecture two of toc please go and first watch that lecture and according to that syllabus we are on the 10th topic that is closure properties of languages okay so see this is a very simple concept in closure properties see the very first point which we should know is See, languages are nothing but set of strings. So all set operations like union, intersection, concatenation, and so on, etc., can be applied on languages. Okay, so uh, this is a very simple point, and I think this is self-explanatory. But let me give you some idea. What exactly is a language? Language is set of strings, like I write A, B, B, A, 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 B, and so on. Okay, so this is a language. So language is nothing but set of strings. So all the set operations like union, intersection, complement, okay, set difference, and so on. All these operations can be applied on languages also. Okay, this is the basic point which you should remember. And let me jump to next slide. And you know the languages are, okay, so languages are said to be closed under given operation if and only if their type does not change after applying the given operation. What does this line mean? Let me give you some idea. See, uh, we have set of all regular languages, okay? Set of all regular languages, which are possible in this universe are all these languages, okay? So this set contain all these regular languages. Each dot represent one regular language. Now, if I take a, uh, say language this, okay? And a language this. Now I apply union between these two languages. So let us take, uh, say this language is L1 and this language is L2. Okay, so this is L1 and this is L2. So now when I do union operation, then is it guaranteed that I will remain in this set only? Or you can say uh, a union of these two languages will, uh, will generate a new language. Okay, say this is the new language which is generated and this language is in this set. Okay, this the language, this language is in this set only now. So what does this mean? When we can say that languages are closed uh, with respect to certain operation, like we can say that languages are closed with respect to certain operation if and only if their type does not change. Their type does not change means what? We have say languages L1 and L2 and we apply union operation and this should be guaranteed that the new language which we will get, see, uh, uh, L1 is also set of strings, L2 is also set of strings. So union will be also set of strings. So union will also be a language. Now this language should be here only. That means uh, this entire, sorry, that means this entire set should be closed. Okay. So uh, I think you are able to, uh, okay. So let me let me say it in, in uh, some, uh, some other manner. See, we can say the two uh, set of languages is closed if their type does not change. This means what? Given two languages, okay, given two languages, if we are able to guarantee that whenever we apply certain operation like union, then the union of these two must remain in this set only. If we are able to guarantee this, then we will say, that the, uh, the particular set of languages is closed under union operation. Similarly, I can say uh, if the operation is intersection and I say L1 intersection L2. Now, if I am able to guarantee that you can pick any two languages from this set and whenever we perform intersection operation between them, then the language which the new language which comes should be in this set only. That means this is a closed set. Okay, this is a closed set means what? We are not able to cross its boundaries. Okay, so in case of union, we will take, we can pick any two languages and we say we apply union operation 
and after applying union operation, the new language which comes must be in this set only. If we are able to guarantee this thing, then we will say that uh, the given set of languages is closed under union operation. Similarly, given set of languages will be closed under intersection operation. If we are if, uh, if we pick any two languages from this set, okay, you just pick any two languages from this set, and you try to find intersection between them. And if after finding intersection, you should get a language like this. So language should remain in this set only. Okay, but if if you are able to find, if you are able to find at least two languages, say, say these are two languages, but their intersection is outside this set. This intersection is lying outside this set. See, intersection will be also a language, but the language, uh, see, if we are consider if we are considering the set of regular languages, let me write it properly. If we are considering set of regular languages, now this language means what? If I am here, that means what? This language is non-regular because we are outside this set. Okay. So if we are able to find two languages, two regular languages, I should say properly, if we are able to find two regular languages whose intersection gives us a language which is outside this set, that means whose intersection is giving us a language which is non-regular, then I will say that regular languages are not closed under intersection operation. Okay. So if you want to prove that the, uh, uh, the set of languages is not closed, then you just need to find two languages and you just need to uh, apply that operation. And after applying that operation, uh, you should be able to get a language, uh, you should be able to get a language which is outside the set. Okay. So when can I say, let me repeat it again. When can I say that the given set of languages is not closed under certain operation? Say, let us say operation is X. When can I say that the set, given set of languages is not closed under this operation X? So I can say this uh, by, by giving you counter example. Counter example means you just have to find two languages. Okay. You just have to find two languages in this set. Say these are two languages. You just have to find two languages. And, and when I apply this operation X on these two languages, then we get a language which is outside the given set. Okay. If we are able to find uh, languages, these two languages, then I will say that the given set of languages is not closed with respect to operation X. So this operation X can be union, intersection, complement, set difference, and so on. This can be any set of operation. Okay. I hope I have made the point clear to all of you. So for, if you want to prove that the languages, uh, a set of languages is closed, then this means what? This means you have to prove it for each and every pair in this set. And obviously, set of all regular languages will be infinite. So we should we uh, so according to this approach, we cannot prove. Okay. So uh, so if we want to prove uh, that the regular languages are closed under union operation, then you just make pair of regular languages. Okay. So set of all pair of regular languages that will be obviously infinite. And you 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 pick two languages, then you uh, you you apply union operation. And you say that, see, the union operation is giving us a language which is also regular. Now you, now you again pick two languages and you do union operation and you say that, see, the union is giving us a language which is again regular and so on. So this will be infinite. So this, uh, this is not obviously, this is not possible. So there are some other ways with the help of which we can prove that the uh, you, uh, regular are closed under union operation. Okay, so I will prove it. Don't worry, I will prove it. But uh, to prove that uh, the given languages, the given set of languages is not closed under uh, given operation, then this is very, very easy. You just have to find two languages and you just apply operation X. And after applying operation X, the language uh, which is coming should be outside the given set. Okay, then I can say that the languages, uh, so set of languages is not closed under operation X. But if you want to prove that the set of languages is closed under operation X, then you have to take each and every set each and every pair okay and you have to prove it. so uh, uh, and obviously this depend on the operation x is unary or binary if this operation is binary like union intersection then we have to take pair and if it is a uh, unary operation like complement operation then we need one one language okay so i will take a language and i will find its complement if if the complement of this language is outside the given set then i will say that compl uh, in complement operation the given set of languages is not closed
okay so not closing uh, so to prove that the given set is not closed is easy okay but to prove that the given set is closed is a bit difficult because you have to take each and every pair or you have to take each and every language okay so uh, this thing i think it's quite exhaustive this is not at all possible so we have some other ways to prove it okay don't worry i will give you all these things i will give you proof and so on okay now i hope i have give uh, i have spent sufficient amount of time on uh, on explaining that what exactly close means i hope you have got the idea now let's move to the next slide this is the summary of your today's class okay so we will study all these operations so i think i have written 10 operations 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 and 10 10 operations and in all these 10 operations we will uh, we will study that which languages are closed and which are not closed and uh, i will prove for regular and cfl but csl and re i will not prove because these are out of scope of this basic course okay but i will prove it for these two languages regular and cfl okay but don't worry in the chapter 3 that means uh, uh, in turing machine chapter i will prove that why re re means recursive enumerable okay recursive enumerable language csl means context sensitive language cfl means context free languages and regular is regular languages only okay. you know all these things okay so in chapter 3 i will try to prove this uh, why re languages or recursive enumerable languages are closed under uh, these operations okay so don't worry i will try to prove it in chapter 3 but csl formal proof is not in your syllabus so don't worry about it but i will give you at least some hint okay uh, uh, about how we can prove and so on. okay so this is the summary of your today's class and let me give you now idea about each and every operation what exactly transpose means what exactly union means concatenation intersection and so on what exactly all these operations means let me uh, give you some idea okay so let's move to uh, next slide so first is the transpose operation transpose operation means say we have a language l in which we have strings like a b okay then double a b then a b a b let us suppose we have only three strings in this language then lt lt or you can write it as lr one and the same thing lr means reversal of l or lt means transpose of l so transpose or reversal these are one and the same thing transpose and reversal these are one and the same thing okay now that will be what you pick each and every string and just reverse it so ab will become ba aab will become b double a ab ab will become ba ba okay so this is the transpose or reversal operation so transpose or reversal means what you just pick each and every string of the language and just reverse them okay so let me give you some more idea see if the language is like this a power n b power m such that n comma m greater than equal to 0 first of all tell me about the type of the language okay what type of language is this i hope you know all these things this is a regular language okay this is a regular language if you do not know about all these things then please watch my previous lectures i have uh, given you idea about how to identify the type of language okay i think uh, it's given in the previous to previous lecture uh, so you have to watch i think lecture 6 or lecture 7 in that lecture i have explained all these things okay so so uh, let me give you a brief idea that why this is regular see there is no comparison at all between a's and b's there is no comparison so hence this is a regular if one comparison and that to infinite that is cfl if more than one comparison then it is csl okay i hope you remember all these things okay so this is your l so what will be l transpose i hope you have guessed it right it will be b power m a power n so that n comma m greater than equal to 0 so this is obviously again regular okay so the so i think you have guessed it right that you can pick any language okay so of course <laughs> there are some uh, exceptions also like i will tell you about dcfls uh, in subsequent lectures uh, in the chapter 2 itself i will discuss about dcfls and dcfls are not closed under reversal operation okay so uh, when when i will introduce about dcfls then i will give you uh, uh, then i will again make this table and i will explain you the closure properties of dcfl so i will add one more column that uh, of dcfl in this table and i will explain all this closure property but uh, but because you do not know about what exactly dcfls are and so on so i am not explaining closure properties of dcfl in this lecture but i will explain them in subsequent lectures that is in chapter 2 okay and i will again add one more column that is rec here okay re and rec languages in chapter 3 and then again i will visit this table and explain all the closure property related to rec languages also 
okay so don't worry about it i won't skip anything okay so uh, so uh, so now i just want to say i just want to say that given a string say this is a string of any length i do not know the type of language i do not know anything i just i am just giving you a brief idea this is a string okay given to you now if you just reverse it triple b double a uh, triple a b double a so what do you think see if you are reading string like this or if you read string like this so what do you think that uh, the type of language will change no it won't change i am just giving you intuitive idea that uh, type of language will not change so in case of transpose each and every type of language is closed okay in play, uh, in case of transpose each and every type of language is closed of course except dcfl i will explain about dcfl in the in subsequent lectures okay so transpose operation each and every language is closed okay let me give you some more idea if you are not able to follow this thing let me give you some more idea see uh, let me take l as a power n b power n or let me use a different color for you okay so l is a power n b power n a power n b power n such that n is greater than equal to 0 this is what this is cfn now what will be the l transpose l transpose will be b power n a power n such that n is greater than equal to 0 and of course it will be cfn okay so just now i have give you, given you idea that you just want to reverse the string now each and every string is reverse so there is no problem at all each and every type of language will be closed under uh, transpose operation okay and let me give you one more idea one more idea i i will just give you intuitive idea you have to uh, uh, you can figure it out okay what i am saying okay so in case of finite or in case of fa in case of fa how will you find transpose okay so just just make final as initial final as initial initial as final i am just giving you intuitive idea i am not give, going into exact details i am not going into technical details i am just giving you idea just make final as initial initial as final and reverse the arrows reverse the arrows okay or transitions arrows means transitions okay reverse the transitions mm, let me write it properly reverse the transitions you will get uh, transpose of the fa or you can say uh, transpose of fa means what transpose of the given regular language okay so this is a kind of formal proof for you that why regular languages are closed under transpose operation this is an intuitive idea if you are you are reading string from left to right or right to left it hardly matters to me so the the uh, uh, the type of language won't change you know? this is the intuitive idea but the actual formal proof is like this only and i am not going into technical details i am just giving you hint see let us uh, let me give you some example this is your initial state q0 after reading a you are going to q1 and on q1 uh, see uh, let me make it very simple for you b after reading b you are going to say q2 and q2 is your final state this is your fa so language will contain only one string that is ab now l transpose or l complement will be uh, sorry l transpose or l reversal will be what ba so how you can find ba how you can find ba okay so just reverse all these things now nah? so so i will make initial as final final as initial initial as final okay let me do it properly for you q not and q1 so final as initial so this this was your final state i will make it as initial initial as final and reverse the arrows reverse the arrows like this reverse the arrows so you will get what uh, so the string accepted will be what ba from this fa okay this fa will accept string ba and this fa is accepting string ab so this is the intuitive idea about how you can find or you can say the formal proof again i'm not going into uh, each and everything or technical details i'm just giving you hint okay so since this is fa and this is also fa so hence this means what regular languages are closed under transpose operation so formal proof will be like this uh, uh, given language regular if the given language is regular then we should have a finite automata accepting it i have already told you language is when i can say language is regular i can say language is regular in two conditions first is 
we should be able to design FA for it, or you should be able to write regular grammar for it. Okay, in, and, and the next uh, topic will be regular expression. So actually, actually, there are three ways to show that the given language is regular. We should be able to uh, design FA for it, or you should be able to design a context-free, uh, sorry, uh, regular grammar generating it, or you should be able to write regular expression representing it. So I will talk about regular expressions in the next lecture itself. So I have just given you hint. So there are three ways. So this language is regular, okay, because we have FA. Now, after doing transpose, we are getting FA for the language. Since we are getting FA for the language, hence the language, this language will also be a regular. Okay. So why this, uh, why regular languages are closed under transpose operation? Because after doing these things, we are getting FA only. And we are, since we are getting FA, that means what the language will be regular only. Okay. I hope I have made the point clear to all of you. Okay. So uh, this is all about transpose operation. And I have already told you, told you that all types of languages are closed under uh, transpose operation. Okay. Next is union operation. Let's jump to union operation. Union means what? See, uh, when can I say L is equal to L1 union L2? Two languages L1 and L2. L1 union L2 is L. This means what? L will consist of all those strings W such that W belong to L1 or W belong to L2. Okay. This is the very simple definition of union. Okay, so how can I prove that all languages are closed under union operation? Let me give you some idea. Okay, how can I prove that uh, all types of languages are closed under union operation? Of course, there is an exception, DCFL. DCFL is not closed under union operation. I will give you idea about it in subsequent lectures in, uh, when I will discuss about DCFL. But presently, I am talking about, see, whenever I say na, all types of languages, I am uh, I'm considering only these four languages only. Okay, so all these languages are closed under union operation. How can I say that? Uh, how can I prove this thing? To prove, uh, if I want to prove properly, then I have to uh, take each and every, see, this is, uh, this is a set of all regular languages. So I have to take each and every pair of regular languages and I have to take union and I have, I have to show that, see, union of two regular is regular, union of two regular languages is regular and so on. So this is obviously time consuming task and no one can do it in exhaustive manner because there are infinite regular languages. So what is the better way? Better is, uh, see, this is a very, very simple way. Let us say, uh, I am proving it for regular. Okay, I am proving it for regular languages. Okay, so L1 is regular. L1 is regular means what? There exists FA accepting L1. So let us take this is your FA. And L2 is also regular. Okay, L2 is also regular. So for L2, we have also uh, FA. Okay, so let me design FA. For L1, I am, uh, see, I am not giving a proper languages like uh, uh, what exactly is L1? A power N, B power M, and so on. It can be any like huh? So let me uh, design FA roughly. Okay, so just to give you idea. Q0. Q0 is the initial. And uh, this is what? This is a spring. <laughs> no, this is not a spring. This is saying that there are lots and lots of states and lots and lots of transition, uh, transitions. And I'm just concent concentrating on initial and final only. Okay, so this uh, is accepting L1. And I have Q0 dash and Q1 dash. So this FA, okay, this FA is accepting L2. This FA is accepting L2. Now, to, uh, to get FA for L1 union L2, I will make a new initial state Q0 double dash. And I will apply null move to both the states. Okay. So now this is the converted DFA, which will accept uh, the L1 union L2 language. Now, since we have a FA, that means what L1 union L2 will be regular. This is the formal. Okay. So you not, need not remember all these things, but I am just giving you idea about how we can prove because you will think that, sir, this is impossible to prove that in union regular are closed because you have to take infinite uh, languages and so on. So uh, I'm not doing all these things. I'm just giving you idea okay about exactly how we are uh, going to prove all these things okay so you may think that it is impossible but no this is possible because um, uh, i am applying small trick that language is regular if we are able to design fa for it now i am i have designed fa for l1 union l2 that means what l1 union l2 will be regular okay i hope i have made the point clear to all of you and another very very simple proof see very very simple proof see language is regular means what there is regular grammar generating it so regular grammar. So 
S1. S1 is the start symbol. Okay, S1 is the start symbol, which is used to generate L1. S2 is the start symbol, which is used to generate L2. Now just apply one more production. S implies S1 or S2. That's it. Okay, now see this entire grammar is what? Regular. This entire grammar is regular. So hence, uh, please, if you are not able to follow that why this is regular and so on. So you have to watch my Chomsky hierarchy video. I have explained all these things in that lecture only. Okay, so uh, S implies S1 or S2. This is again uh, regular type. Na? This is uh, S implies S1 unit production. This is also regular. S implies S2. This is also regular. So entire, uh, uh, entire grammar is regular. So I have designed a regular grammar which can generate L1 in an L2. So that means what? This is uh, this is what your uh, uh, so regular languages are closed in their units. Similarly, similarly, I can say for CFL also. A language is CFL if you are able to design context free grammar generating it. So S1 is the start symbol which is generating context free grammar for L1. S2 is the start symbol which is generating context free language L2. Now S implies S1 union S2. So this entire thing, this entire grammar will be now your context free grammar because I have written context free grammar for L1, context free grammar for L2. And S1 is the start symbol, S2 is the start symbol. So you just have to add this production and so on. So just apply this production, the uh, you will get the equivalent grammar for L1 union. Okay, so this can be CFL. Uh, if L1 and L2 are CFL, then this will be uh, S1 start symbol for context free grammar 1, S2 is the start symbol for context free grammar 2. So S implies S1, S2, you just apply this thing. So on a whole entire this grammar will be context free grammar and CFLs are closed and so on. You can, uh, uh, you can use this proof for each and every type of uh, you can say language. Why? Why I can use this proof? Because S implies S1 or S2. This is a regular, uh, uh, regular grammar type. Now, this production is type of regular grammar only. Okay. So S implies S1 or S2. So since this is regular and regular is the most restricted, so it will be obviously context free grammar, obviously context sensitive grammar, and obviously re recursive enumerator uh, type zero also. Okay. So this is the basic proof. I hope you ha I have made the point clear to all of you. So in union, all the types of languages are closed okay so let me go to the previous slide and i will show you properly that in the union all the types of languages are closed similarly for concatenation also all are closed okay how how are all are closed for concatenation operation let me give you some idea concatenation means what see l is equal to l1 dot l2 this is concatenation operation so let me give you some idea about uh, concatenation operation okay so l will consist of w1 dot w2 such that w1 belongs to l1 and w2 belongs to l2 this is the basic meaning of concatenation operation let me give you some idea l1 consists of strings a b a a a a b l2 consists of strings say double a and a so what about l1 dot l2 l1 dot l2 will be what you just pick one string from l1 and you concat with all the strings of l2 so it will be a b double a and a b a next double a double a and triple a next double a b double a double a b a like this so these are the six strings in L1 dot L2. I hope I have made the point clear. So just pick one string and concat with all the strings and so on. Now let me ask you one basic question. I think you will be able to answer it. L1 is a power n such that n is greater than or equal to zero. n is greater than or equal to zero. L2 is b power n such that n is greater than or equal to zero. Now tell me one thing, what will be L1 dot L2? Most of you will say, sir, A power N, B power N, N is greater than equal to zero, but this is wrong. Why this is wrong? Because A power N, N is greater than equal to zero. That means what? Any number of A's. So language will be what? This language will be in expanding, in, in expanded form, I can write null A, double A, triple A, dot, 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 dot. Okay. And for B power N, I can write null B, double b triple b dot 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 so just pick one string okay so so i pick say a and i will concat with all the strings 
Okay, let me use different color. I will concat it with all the strings. So after C, A concat with null will be A, A concat with B will be AB, then A double B, then A triple B, and so on. Okay, so obviously this is wrong. This is saying what? Equal is followed by equal Bs. No, 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 no. I am not getting equal is followed by equal Bs. I am getting any number of A's followed by any number of A's. So the language will be, language will be, so the correct way to write is L1 dot L2 will be A power N, B power M, such that N comma M greater than equal to 0. Please remember this thing, okay? This is very confusing thing. So A power N, B power N, then you just uh, uh, change the label so that you get idea about uh, there is not no relation between A and B, okay? So this is what? This is regular, this is regular. So concatenation is also regular. So can I say that regular are closed under uh, inter, uh, concatenation operation? No, I, this is just one example. So to properly prove it, I will say like this. For L1, I will have FA. Say initial state is Q0 and after few transactions uh, after few transitions uh, or and few states we are jumping to q1 okay so this is your l1 for l1 for l2 i will have say q2 is my initial l2 and q3 is my final okay so this is fa for l1 this is fa for l2 now fa for l1 dot l2 will be what you just combine a final and initial of these two states uh, of these two FA and uh, with the help of null loop. That means you will make, okay, so uh, let me give you an idea properly. You will make Q1 as non-final, okay, you will make Q1 as non-final and you will join the uh, Q1 and Q2. That means the initial state of second FA and final state of first FA with the help of null loop. So now I will get L1 dot L2. I hope I have made the point clear to all of you. So this is C. Finally, what I am getting, I am getting an FA for L1 dot L2. That means what regular are closed under concatenation operation. This is the formal proof for regular. For CFL and so on for uh, other languages, I will give you the proof like this. For C, uh, for, for context-free languages, for context-free languages, when can I say that L1 is CFL? when there exists context, we grammar generating it. So S1 is generating the, con uh, so uh, for context-free, uh, L1 is CFL, that means what? There exists a context-free grammar, which is generating L1. For L1 generation, I'm using the start symbol S1, and this entire thing is context-free grammar. Just imagine this thing, that this is a context-free grammar. Okay, now S2 is the start symbol for L2, which is generating L2. So L2 is also CFL. Now just apply one more production, S goes to S1 dot S2, okay, or S1, S2. No need to apply dot also, you will get confused. Okay, so S1, S2, just write this, like this thing. Okay, so just write like this, S1, S2. So th this entire is what? This entire is context free grammar. Okay, now just focus on this production. This production is what? This production is according to context free grammar. I have not given this proof. I have not given this proof in regular. Why? Because this production is not according to regular. So I cannot give the same proof for regular also. For regular, I have given proof for FA. Okay, now this same thing can be copy pasted for CSL also. Okay, so S1, see L1 is CSL, L2 is CSL. So CSL means what? There is context free grammar, context sensitive grammar. So S1 is the start symbol, which is generating L1. S2 is the start symbol, which is generating L2. So S goes to S1, S2. So this entire will be context sensitive grammar and so on. I hope I have made the point clear to all of you. So all types of languages will be closed under concatenation operation. Okay, so let me go to the previous slide. See here properly, all types of languages. Again, I'm repeating all type means here what? Regular CFL, CSL and RU. Okay, so concatenation or are closed. What about my intersection? Intersection is very, very, very important. Please note it down carefully. Intersection C or regular, regular are closed under intersection operation. Okay. Regular are closed under intersection operation. Why regular are closed? Because I can say L1 intersection L2. We need to find this thing now. I am claiming that it is it will be regular. Why it will be regular? Because I can design FA for it. How I can design FA for it? See, L1 complement union L2 complement whole complement. That is nothing but L1 intersection L2. Na. If L1 is regular, then I can have DFA for it. I can have DFA for L1 complement also. 
L2 is regular, so I can have DFA for L2. I can get uh, uh, DFA for L2 complement also. How I can get uh, uh, FA for L2 complement? Complementary machine is a complementary language. That means what? Change final to non-final, non-final to final. Now union also I can get uh, FA. And for complement also again I can get FA. So directly and directly I can get FA for this entire thing and this entire thing is nothing but L1 in L2, hence proof. That's it. If you are not able to follow, please watch my like. Uh, 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 please rewind the video and watch it again. I'm not going to repeat it again and again. This is not important. I'm just uh, showing you that in intersection regular are closed. What about my CFL? What about my CFL? You may think that CFL also uh, CFL are also closed under intersection, but no, this is not the case. Let me give you some example. This is very famous example. Lots of books are using this example. Okay, so you have to remember it. And uh, in lots of competitive exam also, the same example have came. A power n, B power n, C power n. L2 is A power n, B power n, C power n. Okay. What do you think L1 intersection L2 will be? The common part between these two. Very, very simple. See, just try to notice this. Here we are saying that B and C are equal. I am not concerned with A. B and C are equal. Here I am saying A and B are equal. I am not concerned with C. So what will be the intersection? Means what common part? The common part will be what? All these will be equal. A, B, and C must be equal. Again, I'm repeating. L1 is saying B and C should be equal. L2 is saying A and B should be equal. So what about my intersection? Common part will be what? This is saying B and C should be equal. So the uh, the in L1 intersection L2, in the string, we should have B and C should be equal. Okay, let me write it properly. Because if B and C are not equal, then it won't be in the uh, L1. The string won't be in the uh, L1. So how it can be in L1 intersection L2? So in, in L1 intersection L2, I want B and C should be same. Why I want B and C should be same? Why I want B and C should be same? Because if B and C are not same, L1 intersection L2 means what? Common to both. Na? Strings which are common to both the languages that will be in L1 intersection L2. Now in L1 intersection L2, obviously B and C should be same because if B and C are not same, then those strings won't be in L1. And if these strings are not in L1, then how they can be in L1 intersection L2? Of course, you have, uh, you by now you have imagined all these things. Okay, so B and C should be equal. Now L2 is saying A and B should be equal. A and B should be equal means what? B and A should be equal. Now B and C are already equal. So A and B should be equal like this. So L1 intersection L2 will contain all those strings in which A, B and C all are equal. So that means what? That means what? This is a CSL because we have two comparison between A and B and B and C also. So this is a perfect example or you can say I have given you counter example for CFLs. Okay, so hence CFLs are not closed under intersection operation. Okay, I hope I have made the point clear to all of you. Okay, ah, rest all languages are closed. So let me show you idea okay, in the previous slide itself. Okay, so here see, see here properly in, con uh, in intersection, regular are closed, CSL, RE, all are closed except CFL. Okay, what about my complement operation? Complement operation is very, very simple again. See, L, if L is regular, how can you say that L complement is also regular? How can you say L complement is also regular? Very, very simple. See, for if L is regular, then we will have a DFA accepting it. Okay. And L complement means what? See, I'm using the word same, na? DFA, NFA, and so on. Actually, they both have same power. DFA and NFA both have same power. Why? How can I prove that DFA and NFA have same power? DFA and NFA have same power. How can I prove it? How can I prove it? This is very, very simple. I have shown you algorithm for conversion of NFA to DFA, subset construction algorithm. Since I have given you algorithm, that means what they have same power. So for showing that language is regular, you just need to find uh, uh, design FA, or you can say NFA or DFA for generating it, or uh, sorry, accepting it. You have to design NFA or DFA accepting it, or you have to generate uh, find a regular grammar generating it, or you need to find a regular expression accepting, uh, representing it. Okay, so uh, don't worry. I will talk about regular expression in the next lecture itself. Okay, so you just have to remember the terminology. The terminology says that uh, uh, FA accept the regular language. Accept the regular language. Okay, now regular grammar generate the regular language. 
and regular expressions represent the regular language. So don't worry about regular expressions. I will talk about it in the next lecture only. Okay. So complement, I'm saying that L is regular. So there exists a DFA. Now L complement is also regular. Why? Just you need to find complement of that DFA only. Complement of DFA means what? Final, non-final, non-final, final. You will get the idea. Final, non-final. You should convert the final as non-final and non-final as final. Non-final as final. Okay. So I hope I have made the point clear to all of you. So in complement, regular are closed. Now, what about my CFL? CFL will not be closed. Let me give you one counter example here also. See, I am saying that L consists of A power M, B power M, okay, and uh, C power P, such that M is not equal to P. Okay, uh, this is your L1. L2 is, Mm, okay, let me let me write it properly. I will say a power n, b power m, c power p, n is not equal to m or m is not equal to p, like this. This is your l. What about my l complement? L complement will contain lots and lots of things. Do not worry about it. I am just saying that I, here I am saying that l is not equal to m or m is not equal to p. Since I have used the word or here. So don't consider it as uh, uh, two comparisons. There is only one comparison. See, uh, if n is not equal to m, then forget about p. It can be either uh, m and p can be either equal, not equal, and so on. So uh, just you have to see that n should not be equal to m. Or I can say that if m is not equal to p, then do not worry about a, a case. A can be equal to b, a cannot be equal to b, and so on. The number of a's can be equal to number of b's, number of a's cannot be equal to number of b's, and so on. And we can have anything. So you just you you are having just one comparison that is n is not equal to m or m is not equal to p. Okay. So if n is not equal to m, only one comparison. M is not equal to p, only one comparison. Now, what about my L complement? L complement will contain lots and lots of things, but it will definitely contain language like this: a power n, b power n, c power p such that n is equal to m, okay, n is equal to m or, uh, sorry, n is equal to m and m is equal to p. That means what? Again, yes. So it will be nothing but, it will be nothing but a power n, b power n, c power n. So L complement will contain this thing. And it will contain other strings also, but it will contain this thing. And this is what CSL. So hence, uh, uh, CFLs are not closed under complement operation. Okay. So I hope I have made the point clear. Or, or you can say like this also. Okay. So, uh, okay. That's it. So uh, we should not go into more and more details because this is a basic course. So I have just given you hint that either n is not equal to m or m is not equal to p. Now, whenever I will find the complement, then what I will say that there will be other strings also, but uh, this uh, these kinds of strings will be all uh, will be present. So this is CSL only. Okay. I hope I have made the point clear to all of you. Okay. So that's it. So this is all about CFLs and uh, uh, CSL and RE. These uh, CSL is closed. CSL is closed. You have to remember this thing. Why? This is out of scope. But RE is not closed. Okay. RE is not closed under complement operation. And I will prove it properly in the chapter 3 itself. Okay. So just remember for now, just remember RE is not closed. And CSL are closed. So finally, for uh, let me uh, let me go to the slide. Okay. So for uh, uh, you can say uh, intersection uh, complement operation, CFLs are not closed. Rest uh, and RE is not closed. CSL and regular are closed. Okay. What about my set difference? Set difference is a derived operator, derived in the sense. What is set difference? How, how, how you will find L1 minus L2? How you find uh, differences of two sets? A intersection B complement. I think you know all these things from set theory. A minus B is A intersection B complement. So L1 minus L2 will be what? L1 intersection L2 complement. So all the languages which are closed under intersection as well as complement, the, those languages will be closed under set difference. Rest won't be closed. So what about my regular? Regular is closed under inter intersection as well as complement. So regular will be closed. 
what about my cfl cfl is is neither closed in intersection nor in complement so cfl is won't be closed in set difference csl is closed in both intersection as well as complement so csl will be closed re re is closed under intersection but not closed under under complement so i have said that both uh, in both these operation language should be closed intersection as well as complement only then it will be closed in the set difference so i think you have got the point that regular and csl will be closed cfl and re will won't be closed okay union with regular just remember the fact all languages are closed all languages are closed including dcfl also i will explain it about dcfl in subsequent lectures but you have to remember all languages are closed okay next intersection with regular again all languages are closed i think you have uh, made the table uh, by now so please uh, i won't uh, i won't shift again and again to the uh, table okay or or let me let me show you just one time Intersect uh, set difference we have already proved. Union with regular all are closed. Intersection with regular all are closed. Okay. Okay. Now let's move to the next slide. Hmm. All languages are closed. Okay. Union with regular, intersection with regular. Okay. What about this? This is clean closure or clean star. In clean clean star means what? L star means L power zero. Union L power one. Union L power two, union L power three, union L power four, dot 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 up to infinity. Okay, this is infinite union of L power zero, L power one, L power two, L power three, and so on. What is L power two? L power two is L dot L. L power three means what? L dot L dot L. That means concatenation operation. So this is very very simple case. So all those languages which are closed under concatenation operation will be closed under clean star operation. So obviously concatenation all languages are closed of course there is an exception dcfl i will talk about it in subsequent lectures but except dcfl all are closed under concatenation operation hence all languages will be closed under clean star operation okay next is clean plus clean plus is similar to clean star the only thing is l power 0 is not present here so l l plus will be l power 1 union l power 2 union l power 3 dot 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 up to infinity so l power 2 will be l dot l l power 3 will be l dot l dot l and so on so again same, same scenario here all those languages which are closed under concatenation will be closed under clean plus operation okay so so you have to just copy paste the in in the table you just have to copy paste the row of uh, your concatenation operation okay let me show you one more time see here concatenation all are closed hence in clean star and clean plus all are closed so all those languages which are closed under concatenation operation will be closed under clean star and clean plus in concatenation operation dcfls are not closed and dcfl won't be closed under these two operations also don't worry about dcfl i will talk about it in subsequent lectures so let's uh, now let's study some questions okay i have written some questions to give you a proper idea about how uh, uh, how uh, how this table the given table i think by now you have de uh, designed your table Okay, I'm talking about this table now. Okay, so I hope you have made this table by now in your notes. So you just have to refer this table, and you just uh, you have you uh, you should be able to answer some questions. Okay, so let me show you some questions. First is regular languages are closed under very very simple. Just see the table. Regular languages are closed under all the operations. Now, so it will be uh, closed under union, intersection, concatenation, and so on. Okay. All all operations regular languages are closed. Of course, there are some exceptions also. There are few operations in which regular are not closed. Okay, but we won't uh, show all these operations here because this is a basic course. In advanced course, I will talk about all these things also that in which operations regular are not closed and so on. Okay, there are few operations. Okay, so just leave them. Okay, so regular are closed under all these. Next, CFLs are closed under union, intersection, complement all. So it is closed under union. It it is not closed under intersection. It is not closed under complement. Okay, so obviously all is wrong option. So union is the correct option. Direct direct questions. Okay, direct questions. We are saying now which of the following languages are closed under complement operation? See the, the first uh, type of question. First two questions were on the lang language base. Na? Uh, regular languages are closed under which operation and so on. So let me show you table one more time so that I can give you some idea. Okay, let me let me show you the table one more time. Hmm. So in the table, uh, the first two questions are column based. Okay, so I am showing you the regular are closed under which operation, CFL are closed under which operation, and so on. Now question can come on row wise also. 
like in transpose operation which languages are closed in union operation which languages are closed and so on so th these are these questions question number 3 is like this only row wise question is row wise so which of the following are closed under complement operation in complement operation regular are closed okay cfl are not closed r is not closed i hope you have uh, made the table properly so that you can match from the table itself so this question was row wise okay ha ah. now now see this is another type of question l1 is regular l2 is regular which of the following is regular l1 intersection l2 so again we are just showing you that regular or closed intersection operation or not yes closed union yes set difference yes reversal yes so obviously answer will be all okay next l1 is csl l2 is cfl which of the following will be csl this is a very good question okay so so uh, see uh, in the previous question also i can say that l1 is l1 is cfl l2 is cfl then which of the following will be cfl okay so so just note it down and i will give you one more question and then i will jump to this question okay don't worry so this will be say cfl and this is also cfl okay N now tell me something l1 l2 cfl l1 intersection l2 cfl no because in in intersection cfl were not closed union yes set difference no reversal yes so uh, option will be b and d b and d will be correct in gate msq are coming na so this is an example of a msq multi select question okay so these two will be correct if i will write csl csl were closed under all the operations all will be correct okay uh, i hope uh, i have made the point clear okay next is l1 is csl l2 is cfl now these two languages are different now what should we do so l1 intersection l2 means what i want to find csl intersection cfl so in that case if languages are different you just have to upgrade upgrade means what since this is cf since every cfl is csl also uh, i have shown all these things in chomsky hierarchy also so since every cfl is csl also so you will write in place of this you will write you will use upgradation and you will say csl intersection csl and obviously in intersection csl are closed so answer will be csl only so which of the following will be csl they are asking na so l1 intersection l2 is csl l1 union l2 again same thing l1 is csl l2 is cfl so upgrade just do upgradation cfl will become csl so csl in union csl that will be again csl so b is also correct l1 minus l2 c l1 is csl l2 is cfl every cfl is csl also so csl minus csl so in set difference csl are closed so c is also correct so obviously d will be correct option okay so d is correct all are correct all are correct okay i hope i have made the point clear to all of you okay so for this question answer will be d so if you have a uh, uh, different languages of uh, languages of different type then just apply upgradation law okay so upgradation means you upgrade the type okay but please 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 don't apply upgradation in union and intersection with regular okay this is an exception like i say l1 is regular l2 is cfl and i say l1 intersection l2 will be what now you will say that regular intersection cfl now you will say inter in intersection with regular all languages are closed so obviously this will be cfl but if you apply upgradation then what will you get what will you get you will say every regular is cfl so it will become let me use different color you will say every regular is cfl so it will become cfl intersection cfl and cfls are not closed under intersection operation so you will get answer as csl okay which is a big blunder which is wrong okay, so please remember this thing regular intersection cfl will be cfl okay <laughs> and one more question is coming into my mind if i say if i say regular intersection cfl is csl is this correct or not this is also correct 100% correct why because answer will be cfl you know and every cfl is csl also so this is also correct okay so please try to remember all these things you will get confused in exam so uh, last time i am saying l1 is regular l2 is cfl so l1 intersection l2 you need to find now do not apply upgradation because languages are are of different type you need to apply upgradation but you will not apply upgradation in two cases first case is union with regular first case is union with regular 
and second case is intersection with regular intersection with regular okay so please do not apply upgradation so no upgradation because if you apply upgradation then answer will be will not be correct okay so no upgradation here okay so i i hope i have made the point clear to all of you okay so upgradation or should not be done because uh, these two are exceptions okay i have given you idea about this in in fifth, uh, just few minutes back i have given you idea okay so let me give you uh, uh, see see here union with regular intersection with regular all are closed all all are closed okay so i have shown you so uh, do not apply upgradation here okay so now if you apply but uh, you, you may get a doubt that sir if we apply upgradation even then we are getting correct answer yes you are no doubt you are getting a correct answer that is csl but you will say that it won't be a cfl no this is wrong okay so if you apply upgradation you will get a csl and you will say that we are getting csl and this is not cfl no this is wrong because this is cfl also okay regular intersection is cfl is cfl also since this is cfl so this is csl also so let 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 me give you uh, uh, one more question so that you will get idea about it so i am saying that regular intersection cfl will be because from the question you will get the idea cfl csl both none answer is obviously both why because regular intersection cfl is cfl now since it is cfl hence it is csl also so answer will be both but if you apply upgradation you will say sir regular intersection cfl because these are different types so apply upgradation you will get cfl intersection cfl and cfl intersection cfl is csl so you will say sir csl is the answer cfl is not the answer so according to you option should be b but but actual answer is c that's why i was saying that you will get a different answer or you should not apply upgradation okay i hope i have made the point clear to all of you and please try to remember this thing that cfl intersection cfl is csl only okay why, why this is csl because you know that cfl are not closed under intersection operation so since they are not closed so i can apply upgradation here also so see every cfl is csl csl intersection csl and csl are closed under intersection operation so you will definitely get a csl i hope i have made the point clear okay so intersection of two cfl is csl this is always true statement okay complement of cfl again see complement of cfl cfl are not closed under complement operation what will you say about complement of cfl complement of cfl will be complement of cfl will be a csl why it will be csl just apply upgradation as uh, every cfl is csl so csl ka complement and complement of csl is csl only so you you want go beyond csl okay so csl is the end why because why csl is the end because csl is closed under each and every operation so if you do complement of cfl you will get csl if you do intersection of two cfl you will get a csl Okay, just try to remember this things. If you are able to follow, then it's fine. If you are not able to follow, just try to remember this fact that uh, if we are uh, given to CFL, intersection will be CSL. This is always true. And if you are getting a CFL, complement of CFL will be CSL. This is always true. Okay. Just try to remember all these things. Okay. Now let's move to the next slide. Okay. So let me uh, uh, let me put things in one slide only. Okay. So let me do it a bit shorter. Okay, now I hope everything is visible to all of you. Please try to note it down. Next question: If L one union L two is regular, then this is again very very important question. Just make star on it. Okay, this is very very important. L one union L two is regular. See, I am not saying that L one is regular. This is different thing. Let me uh, uh, L one is regular and L two is regular. then you can obviously say l1 union l2 is regular this is perfect this is perfect thing that l1 is regular l2 is regular l1 union l2 is also regular this is perfect but if you converse it this is one way theorem please try to remember this thing this is one way okay so in logic you have written na p implies q okay so p implies q one way so, so that means its converse will be what if l1 union l2 is regular then l2 is regular l1 is regular no this is wrong this is wrong Okay, there are lots and lots of examples for this. See, uh, I am saying that L one union L two is regular. Then L one must be regular, L two must be regular, both or none. 
So answer will be none because this is one way theorem. If you want counter example, then I can show you counter example also. Okay, so L1 union L2 is regular. Na? Okay, so let me show you some idea. L1 is A power N, B power M such that N comma M greater than equal to zero. L2 is what? A power N, B power N such that N is greater than equal to zero. So this is what? This is regular. This is what? CFL. So L1 union L2 will be what? See, if you see carefully, you will get the idea about L2 is subset of L1. All the strings which are present in L2 are present in L1 also. Please try to uh, see it carefully because it is saying equal A's and equal B's. It is saying A's and any number of A's or by any number of B's. So obviously it is containing equal also. So L2 is subset of L1. This is, I think you, should, uh, you have noted down. So L1 union L2 will be L1 only. Okay. Because if A is subset of B, I think you know all these things. If A is subset of B, then A union B will be what? B only. Oh, this is obvious thing. No? Okay. Uh, obviously this is true. So L1 by set theory, you can easily say all these things. Okay. So L1 union L2 will be L1 only. So that means what? L1 union L2 is, L1 is what? Regular, no? So L1 is regular, L2 is CFL. Regular union CFL. You are getting regular. Okay, so please note it again. Now you will say that, sir, I am getting contradiction. See, closure properties are the general rules. These are general rules and regulations. But if you are talking about particular example, then you can get this also. That regular union CFL is regular also. For this particular example, this is true. Generally, I can say that regular union CFL is CFL. This is always true. Union with, union with regular, all types of languages are closed. So regular union CFL is CFL. This is always true. This is always true. But this statement sometimes true and sometimes false. For this example, this statement is also true. Okay. Now, if this is true, obviously this is true. Why? Because every regular is CFL. So regular union CFL is CFL also. Similarly, you can say regular union CFL is CSL also. Because every CFL is CSL and so on. So I am stopping here because uh, you will get confused if, if I go more and more deeper. Okay. So I hope I have made the point clear to all of you. So for this example, regular union CFL is regular. Okay. So what now, uh, what can I say about, um, uh, what can I conclude that uh, if L1 union L2 is regular, then L1 must be regular. According to you, I have, I have given you example like this. So you will say that, uh, L1 union L2 is regular, then L1 must be regular. No, this is not the case. L2 must uh, L2 can be regular also. If if you say I am finding L1 union L2, <laughs> you can find L2 union L1 also. L2 union L L1 also. Okay, so you you will say that. Uh, uh, the, see, this is saying L1 and L2 means what? This is saying that first should be regular, uh, and B option is saying second should be regular. So obviously, union is commutative. A union B is B union A. So uh, I think uh, you, you should say that at least one of them should be regular. No, this is not the case. Okay, so the better question can be L1 in L2 is regular, then at least one of them should be regular. No, this is not the case. Okay, so let me give you some more, uh, some more uh, example in which none of them is regular. Okay, so let us take L1 as A power N, B power N, such that N is greater than or equal to 0. L2 is L1 bar. The complement of a power and b power n. Now just see, now just see what will be L1 union L2. It will be nothing but L1 union L1 complement. It will be nothing but your complete language that is sigma star, universal set. And sigma star is what regular. You know all these things. Why this is regular? Because we can design FA for it. FA, how you will design FA? This is very, very simple. A and B. So all possible strings over A and B. Okay. So I hope I have made the point clear to all of you that uh, this is not necessary that at least one of them should be regular. Okay. So even none of them can be regular also. And still L1 union L2 can be regular. Okay. So let, let me let me repeat the, it for you. L1 union L2 is regular, then L1 must be regular. Yeah. Second option is L2 should, must be regular. C option is both and D option is none. So you, you will get confusion that First, uh, this is saying that first should be regular. This is saying that second should be regular. Obviously, this is not true now because uh, union is commutative. Since it is commutative, so L1 union L2 same as L2 union L1. So it hardly matters to me. I am just uh, I am just giving you options just to confuse you. 
so according to my first example which i have shown you will say that l1 must be regular because i have say, shown you that l1 is regular l2 is not regular okay but still the, their union is giving us a regular linkage so l1 must be regular now if you say that l1 must be regular then i will reverse them i will say l1 union in place of saying, uh, uh, saying l1 union l2 i will say l2 union l1 now in that case uh, second part should be regular so i think you will say that second option is correct okay so l1 union i hope i have made the point clear if you are not able to follow please rewind the video i will not repeat it again otherwise it will create confusion in your minds okay so the, so in place of these thing better option should be at least one of them should be regular so this option is wrong at least one of them should be regular means what l1 uh, either l1 should be regular or l2 should be regular or both should be regular but this is not the case i have shown you an example in which none of them is regular okay and still l1 union l2 is regular this is the case none of them is regular but still l1 union l2 is regular okay so that means what that means what none is correct okay so uh, obviously l1 if l1 union l2 is regular then uh, it is possible that none of them is regular okay i hope i have made the point clear let me put everything on one slide so that you can note it down carefully anyway i teach all these things in advanced course but still the uh, uh, i have written the question so i have given you proper explanation if you are not able to follow then leave it uh, okay this is not the part of basic course this is the part of advanced course on the tsc but still i have given you some example because this is uh, important theorem you should just remember that if l1 and l2 is regular then none of them can be regular this is also true okay yeah let's move to the next slide okay this is the last question l1 is a power n b power n l2 is a power n which of the following are true l1 bar is cfl l1 bar is cfl yes this is true because complement of this will be what i have not shown you how to find complement but you should have guessed that a and b are equal then a complement will contain strings in which a and b are not equal okay so l1 complement will be what a power n b power m such that n is not equal to m also it will contain so i am uh, writing union also it will con uh, see these these are what these are uh, strings in which equal is followed by equal b's this is equal is followed by equal b's so uh, uh, in this language strings uh, strings are in the form of a is followed by b so in this language there is no string in which we have b a as substring okay in this language there is no string over a and b which have b followed by a okay or you can say b as substring so you have to write b as substring also b as substring also so l1 complement will be this this entire thing this is what a power n b power m such that n is not equal to m union ba as substring language okay so uh, union of these two will be l1 complement now ba as substring i hope you have remembered that this is regular okay and this is what cfl now regular union cfl is what cfl because a uh, union with regular all languages are closed so l1 complement will be what cfl and again i am repeating if you apply closure property you will say that l1 is cfl so complement will not be cfl no 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 this is not the case if l1 is cfl then complement will be cfl uh, so then complement will never be cfl no i am not saying this see closure properties are saying that complement may or may not be uh, cfl okay so if l1 is cfl then complement may or may not be cfl please remember this okay that uh, closure properties are saying this thing so if a particular example is shown to you then you have to find manually about the complement and so on okay so please remember this fact that uh, if cfl are not closed under complement operation this means that complement of cfl may be cfl and complement of cfl may not be cfl also okay so i uh, so just in one line i can say this is not guaranteed that complement of cfl will be cfl now regular are closed under complement operation this means what this is guaranteed that complement of regular will be regular okay please try to remember this thing okay so now l2 is a power n n is greater than equal to 0 so okay so this is regular na no? this is regular and this is what this is cfl okay so l1 complement is cfl yes this is true i have shown you all these things okay don't worry if you are not able to follow 
you 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 just take some examples you will get the answer okay why i am uh, showing complement of a power and b power and like this okay so or you rewind the video and watch it again i will not repeat again and again okay so l1 bar is cfl this is true l1 dot l2 will be cfl tell me about this thing l1 dot l2 will be cfl or not l1 is what a power and b power and l2 is what a power and so i should i write a power and like this and i i should say n is greater than equal to 0 no this is not the way i have already told you in concatenation please change the power otherwise it will create confusion for you a power n b power n a power m such that n comma m greater than equal to 0 now here only one comparison so it will be cfl yes this is true statement l1 dot l2 is cfl this is 100% true statement okay please do not do like this i have already shown you that uh, see uh, in concatenation a uh, few minutes back i have already shown you that l1 is a power n l2 is b power n so l1 dot l2 is equal to a power n b power n no 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 i have already told you it will be a power n b power m okay change the power now you have got the idea that uh, this will be cfl okay l2 bar is cfl this is a good question l2 bar you will say that l2 is regular so l2 bar will be regular so if this is regular then obviously it will be cfl also every regular is cfl also so answer will be all. Please try to remember all these things. This is a very, very good question. Okay. So I hope I have made the point clear to all of you. Okay. So just uh, try to note it down all these things. Okay. I think uh, I have used. Uh, 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 okay. So I have put everything on one slide. So now you can note it down all these things. So by these seven questions, you have get proper idea okay you have got the proper idea about how to use closer properties okay so the there are some advanced questions like question 7 is advanced question 6 is also advanced question but till question 5 you should be able to follow if you are not able to follow question 6 and question 7 don't worry i will give more and more details in advanced course this is a basic course now but still i have given you just idea or just intuition about how advanced course will look like Okay, if you are not able to follow, then don't worry. I will teach all these things in advanced course. Question six and question seven, you can leave if you are not able to follow. But till question five, you should be able to follow. Okay, so these are the direct or simple questions on the closer properties. Okay. Okay, so that's it. This is all about your lecture eight on TOC. In the next class, I will give you idea about regular expressions. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye bye.